Uh, our first speaker uh, actually met uh, probably a few years ago. Uh, he is actually the promotions coordinator uh, for Boom 997 and Jump uh, uh, video. Uh, but he's also a mental health advocate uh, and speaker, and he's here to share his story around mental health. So please welcome Brian Forsen. that might resonate with some people. Um, and I think it's important to note that um, if you, have, you know, have me mental health and mental illness are completely different. Um, everyone has mental health. And I think that's the main thing that I, I want to get across to everyone today. Um, while some, some people, and a lot more than you might think, suffer from a mental illness, I suffer from depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts. Um, it's important to note that even if you, you don't self, you don't suffer yourself, or it doesn't impact your life daily, that you all have mental health and there are little things or big things you can be doing in your life, daily maintenance things that can help um, help you deal with things and make an overall improvement. Because mental health is health, and you know if you wouldn't go to a doctor and like a cold or anything like that. So if you're having an impairment or anything like that. Um, I kind of started my journey when I was pretty young, 14, 16, um, and it kind of started with panic attacks, and I didn't, I didn't know what that was at the time, so I don't know if anyone here has had a panic attack or, or seen anyone have a panic attack before. It's different for everybody, well, basically for me it was just going to, I know I'm popping a lot, so I apologize, but um, I couldn't, basically I couldn't breathe, so I would try to take a deep breath and get that relief in my lungs. Um, and it just, it wouldn't happen, you'd start freaking out and start panicking and oh, am I going to die, am I having a heart attack, and it just kind of escalates itself. Um, and I would literally get that out of the blue, or as, you know, I would be lying in bed maybe thinking about my own mortality and that one day humans all have to die, and that would start me into a panic. And I had no clue what it was, so I didn't go to my mom and dad, it just would come and go occasionally, so. Um, just dealt with that, and then 16, I went through a bad breakup, um, and I kind of locked myself in a in my room for the summer, more or less, playing World of Warcraft and listening to angry or depressing music, um, which I still do. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, sleep all day till four or five p.m. and then stay up all night playing my video game and not really going out to the outside world. And I think to my parents and, and my friends and, and myself, it was just kind of like, oh, I'm going through a breakup, this, this will all get better eventually, just, you know, broken heart type thing. And, um, well, it did, obviously, the pain kind of relief, that, that kind of, I guess, cynicism or, or a different outlook on the world, and I didn't really understand that yet, but I kind of looked at everything in a more pessimistic lens or, or questioning things that, Maybe I, I shouldn't be questioning at 16, like government and religion and, and all that type of stuff. Um, so all through this, uh, and it's another main message I like to make uh, with, especially kids, as, I, as I'm speaking. Um, I came from a family like upper middle class, suburban, small town, tons of friends, very popular. Uh, my family loved me. Um, you know were always there for me, my biggest supporters. Uh, so, as I'm going through and growing up, I guess you could say that it was really hard for me to understand why I started to get these really negative thoughts and feelings when I had everything that society and life told me I should be happy, I should have to be happy. 
So it's, it's really confusing, and when people would ask, well, what do you have to be sad about? I don't know, I'm just kind of sad. Um, fast forward again, so I'll get to, I was 21, um, I just graduated from college, uh, and came back home, I got a job in, in radio, which was the industry I went to school for, so uh, everything was going very swimmingly. Um, on the outside, but on the inside, you know, I'm going through this transformation in life where all my friends were gone now, everything I kind of knew, I was familiar and comfortable with, that was all done. Um, I was in a relationship I wasn't necessarily happy in, but just kind of was like, in. Um, but you know what, I got this job now, everything's going to get better. Um, and I remember going to it, and um, if anyone is familiar with going through the job interview process, I got the question, what's your biggest weakness? So, talking on the phone, I hate it. Um, and they're like, okay, we'll be on a job and we need you to talk on the phone. I'm like, great, I love it, let's, let's go. Um, so I took it thinking, you know, I can overcome, it's just a challenge, I can overcome it and I'll get better. Um, every day I would be driving to work, like shaking, like a song would come on the radio and I felt like I was gonna cry. Um, every time I got into the building, I, I would go to the bathroom and throw up because my anxiety was so bad and I couldn't control it. Um, so needless to say, the job didn't go the way I wanted it to or the way they wanted it to. So after my three-month probation, they let me go. And then kind of just sent me into a, a downward spiral. And I didn't know what to do. Um, what I thought, the industry I got you know, really good grades in, and now I had this job, was gone. And I was kind of sour about it. And is this what I want to do with my life? Um, again, the relationship thing. It wasn't necessarily toxic, but I was just kind of stuck. So when I look at the situation in life that I was in, really not that bad, not great, but everyone's like, you know what, like, it's just a blip in the road. But this was before I know Bellet's Talk Day. This was, I mean, it was 2012. It wasn't that long ago, but if you think just before that, no one really even talked about mental health or, or if, you know, you were sad, and as a guy, I wouldn't be coming and saying, hey guys, I'm really sad today, I don't know why. Um, so it just kind of was piling on, piling on, and this exponential crisis I was going through, and um, I just, I can't really explain why I decided to, but I decided I wanted to take my own life and tried to do so. Um, and uh, obviously I'm still here, so um, this, the situation, that ha how it happened, we won't get into it, but um, made me real. Like, it, it kind of made me realize it's like, oh no, like maybe maybe it's a sign. I'm still here for a reason. Um, so I, I started to get my you know my crap together and university, and then I got into try to get into working at the radio station again, which was uh, the Bear. Um, so that's my favorite radio station. I'm a hard rock guy. Um, so that was all going great. Got in. I uh, was going to university. Um, getting my life back together again. Um, through that time, I went and saw my doctor again and finally told him, because I, I confided in my mom that I need to go see Dr. Ivanovich, who is just my doctor in, in Crown Place. Um, so I talked to him and he put me on medication and that kind of got my head right. Um, so again, everything's going really, really well. And we get to the point where I was 23, um, and Bell had stopped it. I'm sure you, you all know whatever the thoughts are on that Bell has this day. Um, I decided to just open up for the first time publicly. Um, I, I should have told my family first, but I just kind of, it was an impulse decision, and I just started tweeting out that, you know, this is what I'm feeling like. This is, you know, what I, I you know, I tried to take my own life, all that stuff. And I just put it all publicly before really having a good conversation about it with anybody. Um, and it kind of it went viral a little bit, you know, a couple thousand retweets and favorites, and then I started getting messages from, you know, my friends, my family, uh, people who um, knew me at work. You know, I don't know how many times you hear about it, especially when it's in the news and it's a, it's a story about suicide, or it's always like, oh, I, I never would have thought he was always really happy, or she was always singing, smiling, and I never saw it coming. I and mean, that was kind of me, so it was a big shock to a lot of people who, who knew me but didn't know this part of me. Um, that I'm always joking around, smiling, but I, I was kind of struggling. And I guess you can kind of equate it to 
you know, because I feel this way, I don't want anyone else to feel this way. So it gives me some joy and meaning to make people feel that way, uh, feel better, and, and feel happy. Um, so you know, as I started to talk to strangers, uh, people who I never even thought knew my name or were reaching out, um, I realized that by sharing my story. Um, it resonated with people because a whole bunch of people started confiding in me. It's like, oh, I went through that too. I felt that way too. Like, you did? What? Like, what are you talking about? Like, people who, again, seemed exactly like me. Happy on the upside, you know, doing great things, super successful. Oh no, they, they, they opened up to me about that type of stuff. And I was like, wow. Um, while these feelings are still out here, it's kind of... It's a sucky comfort that everyone else is going through stuff like this too, but that you aren't alone. And that's what you always hear, right? That we're, we're not alone in it. So comfort in that, that terrible thought in there. Um, so that's started the advocacy and speaker uh, part of it. Um, I'll jump ahead to what got me into involved with this, this speaking and really involved with mental health uh, through the Royal and DIFD and, and everything like that is um, I went through a really hard time at work uh, and again, wasn't talking to anybody and I was just letting it eat myself up and uh, finally my boss called me into the office and said, what's going on? Like, what do you mean what's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, no, we, we all know uh, people have been seeing you in the halls and uh, they, they've been asking me, is he going to do something? Um, so what's going on? I was like, well, do you really want to know? And she said, yeah. So I laid it all out. Um, you know, the, the, the ugly, the, the really ugly. Um, so we had, a, we just had a conversation. I was leaving for a conference in Toronto. So I had this eight hour drive where I thought about what I wanted to do um, with, with this revelation because I was trying to make my situation better. Um, and through that, I, I knew I wanted to do, I decided I wanted to get back and get involved with the community. Talking about it is great, and it's, it's helped me, it's been very therapeutic, but at the end of the day, when more people talk, the system gets overburdened, and then people can't talk to someone when they really need to. So, they need money, and I decided I wanted to get into fundraising. Um, so, I just, I put together this initiative called Pause for Pause, where I wanted people to come out, um, and spend some time with these fully adoptable rescue dogs um, so you could meet them and, and make a donation and then all the money goes to DIFD at the Royal and, uh, and uh, sit with Michelle for dog rescue. So that was through work. I had a nice position where I could influence you know, that, that media marketing campaign and we just finished our second year in May and uh, raised over $12,000. So good start. As we, we that if we go full circle as I take you through the goals notes of my, my journey, it's that we got, I got to a point where I was like, the way that I'm going to feel better is by helping other people and, and giving back and making sure that people who are going something through something like I did um, can find the help that they need because we all, we all know like, money doesn't come easy from the government and more and more people are talking about it and seeking help. So if you can, and anyone has the means to fundraise or, or give to, I mean, any charity basically, but mental health, <coughs> that's what the system needs because we don't have it. Um, I'm going for time, am I getting more? Two minutes. Um, I guess the final thing, I guess, to end it all is, while we're here to talk about overcoming it, um, I don't think I've overcome anything. Um, I just recently went through another tough episode where I'm going back to therapy, um, I'm starting, I started to see a naturopath and get acupuncture done and, you know, I exercise five or six days a week, I try to eat as best as I can, all those things, and for a mental illness there is really no overcoming it, it's just managing it and, and doing what you can and, all, and learning all about it and, you know, all the recent research and you just figure out what works for you and um, whether you have a mental illness or not. Learn all these things that can positively benefit your day uh, and your life and make those easy changes that will help you get to a spot where you know, you're know you living a balanced life. And I think that that's what we all want. We can live a balanced life where we're not just about work, or family, or relationships, um, and you know, just 
be as happy as you can. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ryan. I, uh, so, and actually, I, I forgot to mention, Ryan does have a podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, Life in Red. Uh, and actually, it's interesting, so Ryan was talking about uh, kind of that shared experience, and knowing you're not alone. And actually, I was having some anxiety, and I actually listened to one of your Life on Red podcasts, and there was something about doing exercise. So I actually finally went back to do to the gym uh, for like the umpteen time, but that's okay. Just to show people with disabilities are the same as everyone else. I've also joined a gym and have a membership and then don't go. So <laughs> 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 um, but uh, thank you for sharing that and I, I, I think you hit the nail. I should say when I say overcoming, I, I always tell people because like I do motivational talking and I'm like it's not to say that every day I'm happy and every day everything is rosy and everything is great. We all have those um, challenges and those difficulties, but being able to continue and to find a purpose that we can feel good about and that helps us pull through, I think is important. So I uh, want thank you for sharing your story and actually your tweets is how I thought about asking you to speak and share your story. So see, tweeting does work. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, guys, if you want to tweet about how good a time you're having, if you want to use the hashtag spotlight, don't be shy. Um, little plug in there, but how about another hand for us? 